everybody. Welcome back to the next part of Hotel Dusk. So we need to go into our room now, which is what we're getting ready to do. In uh, this video I've kind of uh, deferred to uh, using just the mouse. Um, I'm going to try doing that. Keyboard's not entirely necessary. Uh, who's there? Um, begging your pardon, but are you Kyle Hyde? That's right. And did someone from the front desk get in touch with you? About the parcels? Yeah. You're the guy who called down earlier. The very same. My name is Martin Summer. I'm currently lodged in room 211. Martin Summer, huh? I've heard his name before. At any rate, about the parcels. Yeah. The bellhop delivered a parcel to my room some time ago. Unfortunately, it appears he somehow brought me the wrong one. However. Yeah. <laughs> Please forgive me, but I failed to notice until after I opened it. The contents were not what I was expecting, you see. At any rate, I saw the name Kyle Hyde on the forum, and so here I am. Hey. I'm going to adjust my mic a little here. Don't read my stuff. Good name, isn't it? Good name, isn't it? Indeed. He's doing that smile again. Quite a nice name, actually. Skip the explanation. I got a short attention span. Is, is that so? Our packages got swapped. Mine was delivered to your room, right? And the one I got here is probably yours. That about cover it? Yes, I do believe that summarizes the situation very succinctly. <laughs> Sussently. So where's my package? Oh yes, I brought it with me. It's right here. That's it, huh? Yes. I've heard of you. Martin Summer. I've heard that name before. Yes, that's not surprising. Perhaps you've run across my name in a magazine or a newspaper. Does that ring any bells, Mr. Hyde? Huh. I suppose it's possible that you've actually read one of my books. No? Maybe. You're a writer? Yes, that is correct. Although I prefer to think of myself as an author. I pen novels mostly, although I have dabbed in others, more obscure mediums. Novels, what kind? Mysteries. They sell. Yes, they do all right. You can find my work in most bookstores of note. I have quite a large female fan base, actually. You don't say. Have you perhaps read any of my novels? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I read one. Truly. Tell me, which one? Uh, I don't know. 
pick the angel whispers. I think it was called the angel whispers. You read it. Oh, how exciting to learn that you've read that story. Well, it fills me with pure happiness. Now then, Mr. Hyde, shall we discuss my parcel, which was inadvertently delivered to you? Sure, I'm game, and we already discussed it. All that was in the package was this notebook. I show some of the old notebook. Eureka, that's it. This is the notebook. It's what I've been waiting for. Great, then I'll take my package from you and we'll call it a day. Yes, please do. Doesn't look like he can take his eyes off that notebook. Guess he was really looking forward to getting it. Must be a writer thing. How about I take your shoes instead? <laughs> Pick up the box that Summer brought with him. I throw it on the bed with my other box. Hey. Oh yes, my apologies. Let me just... Hey. Huh? Oh yes, yes. I suppose I should depart. It's fortunate for both of us that we discovered this mistake when we did. Now if you'll excuse me. Summer finishes talking and leaves the room. Stupid writers. <laughs> Kyle's an ass. Alright. So now we gotta deal with two boxes. Ah, crap. So that was the original. This is the new one. The package Summer brought me is on the bed. Pick it up. There's an order sheet, new products, and a client list inside the box. Okay. With the portable mini sewing machine, great. I thought it was a stapler. Adhesive remover. No one's gonna buy this crap. It's the order sheet the order sheet that was inside the box. The items I'm supposed to find are listed on here. One, a small red box. Maybe I should write this down. <laughs> uh, okay. Give me a second to write it. So this is from the order sheet. Let's set a small, small red box. Should pr probably put that that was the first item. All right, two is the December issue of a magazine with Cece, Cecily, 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 Lee on the cover. Okay. I'm not I don't think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Lee. Alright, next. That's it. Just two things. Okay. So a magazine and a red box. I guess it's time to call Rachel. And there's the client list, just like Rachel promised. I got the client list. Better remember to put this in my suitcase. Don't want Rachel to bite my head off. Okay. 
He doesn't care about this stuff. Okay, we're back out. And that was empty. Let's look at our inventory. Let's make a save, actually. Here's Martin. He's a writer. It mainly just tells you what room they're in, so in most cases. Which it would have been easier to just put their names on the map, I think. But it's not what the game does. Let's see what the inventory looks like. order sheet containing the items Ed wants me to search for. So you can't like get that information again because he won't reread it as far as I know. List Rachel sent along with the order sheet. I'm supposed to put it in my suitcase. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll call Rachel. deal gone wrong. That's what it sounds like. But who knows what's in the box could be trouble. My old friend. Any idea where to start? Yeah, I'll head down to the front desk and poke around the lost and found. If that doesn't work, I guess I'll just, I just gotta search the hotel. Nice plan, Hansel. Let us know if you come up with anything. Head around. He just stepped out. Some old client called and asked to see him. Said he'd be right back, though. Why, you need something? No rush. I'll call back. I've got a weird feeling about this one, Kyle. Be careful. Only because you asked. Vincent's the president of Red Crown. He's an ex-LA cop who worked like a dog until they forced him to retire. My old man died when I was 10, but he and Ed were good friends. And as for me, well, Ed's the only one who knows I'm still searching for Bradley. The only one who knows I won't let it go. Now I run into Lewis, another voice from the past. What are the chances of him being here? Slim to none, and Slim left town. 
throw this girl Mila into the mix and things are getting kind of crazy. I better think all this through and make sure it's straight in my head. Yeah, you gotta put all the events together. The guy who pays the bills at Red Crown has spoken and when Ed speaks, I go. That's why I'm in this side of nowhere in some hole called Hotel Dusk. The reason I'm here is to get some rest, to find certain items. That's right. I sell household goods for Red Crown, which is run by my old man, his pal, Ed. I also lend a hand with a hobby of his. Ed's got a side business finding things that get themselves lost. Had an interesting chat with Dunning, the hotel owner, when I checked in. He mentioned a couple of things that I can't quite get out of my head. First, six months ago, some guy with my name stayed here. Second, the room I'm in. Room 215 has a history. The story he told me about the room was... See, the cops are there. Grant's wishes. That's right, he said the room grants wishes. I think if you get any of these wrong, you have to like start completely over. I forget. I'm sure we'll get to see me fail it at some point. Said if I stayed there, my wish could come true, would come true. Kept a straight face, too. If I met him in New York, I bet he'd try to sell me the Brooklyn Bridge. Here's what gets me. Why'd he tell me such a crazy fairy tale in the first place? I checked into Hotel Dusk and got room 215. Then I waited in my room for the package Ed sent. Imagine my surprise when the bellhop turned out to be Louis Donano. I knew Louis from my days back east. He knows I used to be a New York cop. But he didn't know my partner, whose name was... Bradley. That's right. My partner on the force three years ago was Brian Bradley. We were investigating that crime ring responsible for all those art thefts. That idiot Lewis brought me somebody else's package. I went to the lobby to straighten things out. That's where I met the young girl named Mila. Mila hitched a ride to the hotel with a kid named Jeff. She didn't have any luggage or money, so Rosa took her under her ample wing. But the weird thing when I talked to Mila was... She wore a bracelet. That's right, it was the silver bracelet she had on her left wrist. Looked like the one Bradley was wearing the last time I saw him. That idiot Lewis brought me the wrong package. My stuff got sent to a guy named Summer, who's in room 211. After a bit of discussion and some other nonsense, I finally got the damn thing. Inside the box was an order sheet, some new products, and my client list. The order sheet listed the things Ed wants me to find. It's a short list, only two things on it. One's a pinup bag with a dame named Cecilia. Lee on the cover, and the others, small red box. The other thing I'm supposed to find is a small red box. As soon as I got the order sheet, I gave Ed's secretary Rachel a call. Now that they know what I'm looking for, it's time to start searching the hotel. But this job feels different somehow, something's off. Maybe it's because I ran into Lewis. I haven't seen him for three years. Or maybe it's because there was another guest named Kyle Hyde. 
guess that girl I met by the front desk could be behind it too. Whatever it is, Bradley, I can't get you out of my head. I feel like I'm going to find something big here. Something that's going to lead me to wherever it is you disappeared to. Tell you what, Bradley, I think it's going to be a long night. Save your game. Well, Bradley's off in the water from the pier that you shot him at. <laughs> That's where he is. So this is the end of like the first chapter. You have to do those little uh, question and answer with Kyle. Kind of sum up the chapter. Here we go, chapter two. It's 530. times my notes so 30 more minutes and then we can have dinner finally <laughs> well what now guess I have to start searching this dump okay so the boxes are useless now still can't get into the suitcase Pretty sure we need to uh, cut this away with something and use it, but we don't have any tools yet. Although sticking a metal coat hanger into a suitcase keyhole, I don't know about that. Seems a little. thinking in the last video if they ever made Hotel Desk Room 215 into a movie I could see uh, Kathy Bates playing Rosa <laughs> what are you doing what me what am I doing what's it look like I'm doing I'm cleaning work my fingers to the bone but you think this place stays clean of course not no why one of our guests is a slob, that's why. Don't look at me. Oh, if I thought it was you, you'd know. Cleaning isn't easy, you know. It's a back-breaking, thankless task. And the Donano boy, ha. Huh? It's his job to clean the floor, but he's so lazy. He ups and vanishes whenever there's work to be done. I bet he's goofing around somewhere, eating chips and watching TV and so forth. Oh, and speaking of Lewis, I've got another thing to tell you. Remember that girl you met earlier, Mila? Remember her? That two-bit Casanova says he's fallen in love with her. I know, poppycock, right? <laughs> yeah, lots of poppycock. Yes, I swear, mooning over girls is the only thing he's put any effort into. Tell me about Lewis. He's a useless bum. Useless, huh? Yes, useless. That's what I said. <laughs> but smooth as butter, that one. Knows enough to tell folks what they like to hear. But when you really need him, he's nowhere to be found. What a snake. Anyway, that's why I'm in... That's why I'm the one that does all the work around this place. Want my opinion? We should let him go. He's more trouble than he's worth. Oh, I asked Dunning about a replacement. Someone who might actually work. But... 
who'd work in a hotel like this. The stories alone keep folks away. So, short staffed, what stories? Well, I don't know if I should. You're the one who brought up the stories, spill it. I'm talking about the whole wish granting thing. Wishes. Don't be absurd. It isn't anything as silly as that. Truth be told, the whole thing goes back to the hotel's previous owner. Oh, really? That's right. And? Oh, look at what I've done, opening my mouth when I should keep it shut. Got a sec. <laughs> you talk too much. You can't talk. So what's this thing you shouldn't be talking about? Look, it doesn't really matter. Why don't you just forget about it? Tell me. I don't want to talk about it. Listen, there aren't any rumors about the hotel, okay? Just forget it. Hold on a second. Okay, I won't push you. Okay, I get it. I won't make you talk. Good, great, glad to hear it. How's Mila doing? She's in my room, catching up on her sleep. Poor thing, she must have been exhausted. I laid her down on the sofa and gave her some tea, and she fell right asleep. Did she say anything? Not a word, maybe she's mute. Pretty odd, that, don't you think? not sure what I'll do if she keeps this up. I guess I'll watch over her tonight and then give the police a call tomorrow. I see. Hold on just a darn minute. Don't tell me you've fallen for the girl too. No, it's not that. It's just... It's that bracelet Mila was wearing. If it's really the same one Bradley had. It's just what? I just need to ask her something. Ha, huh, I bet I can just bet what you'll ask her. Well, what's it about? Mm, this is man. It's about a man I'm looking for. I think Mila may know something about him. Looking for someone, are you? And who might that be? Just a guy I used to work with. An old co-worker, eh? Sounds like there's a story there somewhere. Look, it'll just take a second. Let me swing by your room and see her. Not right now. No, no. I don't think so. Nope. Then when? Let her sleep a bit longer. Anytime after 8 p.m. will be fine. You can get to my room from the lounge. Let me write that down. says staff only and walk down the hall. My room's the first one after the hall bends to the left. Got it. Rosa's room after 8 p.m. Better write a note in my notebook so I remember. Oh no. So she's not in room 111. She's in the staff room. What? I have to go and get the restaurant ready. Late. I shouldn't have stood here chatting with you. I have to go. Busy, busy. You work in the restaurant? Got it. I also do all the cooking for this hotel. I've got more things to do than ten men. It's a wonder I managed to keep up. Sorry to cut you off, but I gotta go. Things to do. Oh, I'm so late. Sure. Oh, if you run across that deadbeat Lewis... Uh, tell Rosa. Tell him Rosa wants to see him. Got it? Good. 
Rosa finishes talking in terms and scuttles away. And a quick save. Make ourselves a hard save. Guys, we'll stop this video here. Our timer's gone off on me. When we come back, we'll keep uh, looking around, uh, causing trouble. So, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.